President Joe Biden is still smarting from having been forced to abandon his re-election campaign more than three weeks ago and has made clear to those close to him that he was particularly unhappy with former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, with whom he has not spoken since his decision to abandon his candidacy. Sources stopped short of using the word grudge, but said Biden would not soon forget those who appeared to be most active in pushing him aside. While he has appreciated the warm embrace of Democrats following his decision, there have also been moments of eye-rolling after public tributes from certain party members who most actively tried to push him from the race. The process that led him to exit the campaign left the president alternately embittered and relieved, according to people familiar with his mindset, who say Biden is still processing the events that led to his ouster as the Democratic standard-bearer even as he firmly believes that he made the right choice. Another source familiar with the matter said that Biden was unhappy at the time, but is not spending time ruminating about it. White House spokesman Andrew Bates disputed the characterization that Biden was still dwelling on his unhappiness with Pelosi, saying it was not accurate and that the president's attention is on the future, not the past. While the 81-year-old president holds some regrets about how it unfolded, Biden is now also enlivened by the opportunity to burnish his legacy without having to run a bruising campaign against former President Donald Trump. And if Biden harbors any lingering hard feelings, he has been clear about one thing. He holds no hard feelings toward his vice president, Kamala Harris, who has swiftly replaced him atop the Democratic ticket. Biden has told people he is proud of both how Harris rose to the occasion to replace him on the ticket and how the party rallied behind her, in no small part because he quickly endorsed her as his chosen successor. Biden and Harris will make their first official joint appearance in their new roles as lame duck president and Democratic nominee Thursday for an event focused on drug costs. Since dropping out last month, an unambiguous mandate has been articulated to West Wing and former Biden campaign officials alike. Anyone who was working, until a handful of weeks ago, to re-elect the president should now channel that same energy into helping elect Harris. While Biden's team has always included the vice president's office in coordination on strategy, policy, and messaging, sources described a new internal dynamic in which more input is sought from top Harris aides, including her chief of staff, Lauren Vols, whose role has become more integrated with the West Wing. Vols previously met one-on-one -on -one with chief of staff Jeff Zients regularly, but now the two meet daily, a source familiar with the matter said. Zients also checks in regularly with Harris. The West Wing, a source familiar with the dynamic said, is more deferential to the vice president's side. Before, it would have been, the president is announcing X thing. Now, it's more of a conversation to make sure it makes sense for her, too. One senior White House official said there is almost an over-communication with the vice president's team on all matters to ensure there are no surprises, no mistakes, no crossed wires. Biden, for his part, has indicated that he is game to do a lot of things in the final stretch of the general election that might be helpful for Harris, sources said, including campaigning heavily in Pennsylvania, a key battleground where he was born. Sources said Biden was likely to try to help rally Harris coalitions with whom he's enjoyed popularity, among union workers, senior citizens and rural Americans. The president saw Harris as having remained unflinchingly loyal even as a flood of Democrats were calling on him to drop out of the 2024 race over the course of July, or, as in Pelosi's case, were publicly articulating their concerns. People close to Harris say she stayed in her lane and refused to engage in the inbound calls her team fielded from lawmakers, strategists and donors expressing support for her to replace Biden on the ballot. Harris intentionally or unintentionally played it perfectly, which gave him the room to endorse her, said a top Democrat close to the West Wing and the vice president's office. He's willing to do whatever he needs to do to help her. Thursday's event on drug costs will highlight an agenda item that's been central to Biden's term that Harris is expected to tout as the cost of living remains of high concern to voters. In the last three weeks, Harris has been carefully assessing where to break with Biden on policy and messaging. She ditched his team's do-man gloom message focused on January 6, 2021, and the danger Trump poses to the country in favor of a message centered more on optimism and joyfulness. And when she releases her economic plan in the coming days, she need to balance her own proximity to the Biden administration's policies, sources say, with the general discontent among the electorate with Biden's record on the economy.